Hi everyone, it's Simon here again. I'd like to welcome you to Gmail Ninja School. Um, now, there's no doubt that sort of email is an inescapable part of modern life, but it's grown into a bit of a monster. In fact, uh, it's got to the point where uh, McKinsey recently um, estimated that uh, the modern kind of desk-based worker spends about 30% of their time managing email. So, uh, many of you may already be using Gmail. Um, it's far and away the most popular of the sort of free email clients available to you. I mean, does anybody really use Hotmail anymore? Um, and so what I want to do is just spend a few minutes equipping you with eight tips to transform you into a Gmail ninja. So email is inescapable, but if we're going to do it, we might as well do it um, as efficiently and effectively as possible. So sit back and enjoy the ride. The one thing I will say before we start this session is that this session is designed for people who are using or think they want to use Gmail. Um, if you're not using Gmail, then um, there aren't many opportunities to apply the content of this session. Okay, everyone, before we get started, I'm going to have uh, eight tips to pass on to you. Now, you may be aware of some of these tips already. Uh, if you do encounter something you know, persist because I'm confident that you won't have encountered all of these. So, tip number one, offline Gmail. Um, there's going to be lots of times, and I've encountered them many times myself, where I've wanted to use some time when I'm offline, such as sitting on, in, uh, on a flight, uh, maybe taking a train somewhere, or just sitting somewhere that I don't have access to the internet. I've wanted to be able to kind of get on top of my Gmail whilst I'm sitting there. Um, unfortunately, uh, without an, a connection to the internet, that's not possible. So um, there is a really cool feature hidden here in the settings. Um, this is going to be where we are dealing with most of the tips that I pass on today. Um, so open up the settings. Um, now you'll see here um, we've got a bunch of different tabs that we can deal with. Um, scroll across to the right and you'll see there's a section div devoted to offline. Click on that um, and we've got the option here to launch Gmail offline. So it's giving us the option here, uh, you can see at the top of the screen uh, to basically install Gmail offline. That's what we want to do. So click on the link. Now just a quick note here. This is an extension yeah, that works with Gmail. And this extension, this Gmail offline extension, will only work with Chrome. So um, just bear that in mind if you're using a different browser. We just click the Add to Chrome button, add the app. And now you'll see here in our uh, this address Chrome dot slash slash apps gmail offline has been added to that so we can easily navigate to it um, and you can see there as soon as it loads um, that our uh, the email from our brand new gmail account is available to us now i could go through the whole process of disconnecting my account from the internet and showing you this but you just need to uh, believe me when i tell you that it's there so to get back to that in future um, you simply just uh, navigate to the apps that button should be existing in your, um, in your uh, toolbar there. If it's not, you can simply take a note of this address. Um, then we just click on click Gmail offline and we get taken to our Gmail. And that's where we can use it whilst we're sitting on the train or doing whatever it is. Okay, on to tip number two. Uh, this is a really cool tip, um, and I might demonstrate this with my with a different email account, but um, this account is obviously very light on email, but many of you are going to be on different mailing lists and distributions, and every day you're going to be inundated with mail, which you may be interested in, but you don't necessarily want clogging up your inbox. Um, so I want to introduce you to a service called Unroll Me. So U-N-R-O-L-L dot me. So this is a really, really awesome tool for cleaning up your inbox. So let's just click on Get Started Now. We'll go through the process. So I'm going to use my personal email address here, um, which is simonboot at gmail.com. I'm going to tell them that I agree, and we're going to go continue. Now the service is going to ask for um, access to my email account. Uh, now I need to give it that. Now what you can see here is basically it scanned my inbox, and it's showing me that all the different newsletters that I have basically subscribed to over the years. Now many of these I receive, my inbox is totally out of control, um, but this is an option for me to basically try and add some order to it again. And so um, for each newsletter that lists here, say American Airlines, it's given me the option to either add it to a roll-up 
or to unsubscribe. Now, unsubscribe is really clear. That's basically take me off this distribution. Um, this roll-up is a really interesting thing. So what it does um, is basically um, unroll me will, um, for any email that you add to this roll-up, it will basically take them and add them to a single distribution that it sends to your inbox at a frequency at which you tell it. And so instead of receiving you know, hundreds of individual emails from all of these organizations that you've told that you're interested, Unroll Me will receive those in, um, emails on your behalf. Um, they'll still go to your inbox, they'll be just stored in a separate folder, and they'll basically compile them into a single distribution for you. So it's a great way of adding order to an otherwise out of control inbox. So tip number three, um, search. So many of you will be familiar with search in Gmail. It's really powerful. It's got great um, you, you know, keyword search there. It's really effective. But um, there are a number of sort of modifiers you can use to try and get, um, you know, to look for in a more nuanced way for an email you might be searching for. So uh, there are a whole bunch of these, and I'm going to put the link um, that you can kind of uh, read more into it in the comments to this video. Um, but some of the more useful ones I'll just introduce to you now. And so the first two are basically just to and from. So if you're looking for an email from a particular person, you can simply you go to dot dot and then either put their name. So it might be Anna or you know Simon or a full email address. So Simon at gmail.com or whatever it might be. The same applies for from. So if you're looking for an email from a particular person, you can use this kind of either a full email address or just a name. Uh, the second one, uh, and this is really cool, um, is uh, using the is command. So is um, unread or is read. Um, another one is is if you use stars, the star rating in Gmail, this is a great way to look for any kind of emails that you have starved. Uh, sorry, it's not stuffed, starred. Um, the third one I'd like to show you is has, and this is great for looking for attachments. And you can see down here that Gmail is great at sort of suggesting, you know, completions to the things that you might want to search for. So it knows we're looking for emails that have an attachment. Now, because this is a brand new account, there are no emails with attachments. But you know, in your own account, you're probably going to have hundreds of different emails with attachments. Um, you can also combine these search terms. So has attachment and is from Francis um, or whatever it might be. Uh, now the final set of um, search phrases I want to show you are using date emails. And so if you're looking for uh, an email that you know or roughly know when it was received, you can say after and then put the date in. So the, the, the structure that Gmail uses is, you know, uh, year, month, and day. Or so that might look like if we're looking for an email that rec was received this year, we'll say two, two zero one five, oh one, oh one. And so that'll show us all email that was received after the 1st of January this year. Likewise, if we're looking for an email that was received before the 1st of January this year, we can just go before, and that will give us the same um, results. And so obviously, brand new email account, no email in there. But if we change that to after, then we should get our three email addresses and a couple of drafts that I've got saved there, which I'm going to get rid of. Cool. OK. Now, the next tip I want to show you is canned responses. And these are really handy when you find yourself sending the same kind of email, or typing the same kind of text over and over again, such as when you're contacted by a customer for the first time. Now, uh, these are really useful for me when I'm dealing with students in my role. Um, often the first time I respond to them, I end up typing the sentence, uh, you know, hi, my, na my name is Simon and I'm the student enterprise manager at London Mint. So let's have a look at how canned responses can help us save time. Just come over here into the settings again. Now, lots of these features, uh, or lots of interesting functionality is contained under this area called labs, yeah? So this is functionality which is not in Gmail as standard, but you can choose to add it in. So scroll down to the third one on the list. We've got canned responses here. We're gonna click enable, scroll to the bottom, and then go save changes. So it reloads our inbox. So it's got this now, should have the um, canned response functionality, and I'll show you how it works in practice. And so let's assume here that this first email was from a, a student that was looking for assistance from me, or from you even. So just click reply. Um, now the sentence that I was talking about is like this. Hi there, my name is Simon and I'm the Student Enterprise Manager at London Met. 
And so it'd be great if I did not have to type this every single time that I emailed somebody. So what I can do is I can highlight this text. So this is the text that I want to make a canned response from. I come over here to our more options, canned responses, and I want to basically um, create a new canned response. And so I'm going to call this one, hi, my name is Simon, just so I know exactly what it is. So if I delete that text now, I should be able to easily come over here to our more options, canned responses, just choose hi, my name is Simon, and there away we go. And so you can rec um, record any number of canned responses depending on the situation and whatever it might be, even much, much longer pieces of text. Yeah, you can put whole emails in, uh, in there, which um, you can then just go and adapt later. So that's a really, really cool feature. Um, okay, the next tip on my list is auto advance. So one of the most frustrating things with Gmail is that whenever you um, respond to an email and send it, then it takes you immediately back to the inbox. Now, um, often what people want to be able to do is that as soon as they've dealt with a piece of email and responded to it, they want to be taken to the next email in the inbox so they can then deal with that. Uh, and this functionality enables you to do just that. And so again, it's hidden in here under settings um, and in the labs. So here we have the third one on the list is auto advance. So we're gonna go enable for that. Scroll down to soft save changes again. Now that we've activated auto advance, we need to configure it. And that's back here in settings again. And so under the general settings tab, you can see now we've got auto advance here. And so basically we can configure exactly how we want Gmail to respond when we archive or delete a message. And so at the moment it's set to go to the previous older conversation. And so this assumes that we're gonna start at the beginning of our inbox and work backwards. And so I'm happy with that option. So let's just leave that as it is. So you can see how this works. If we were to send an email um, like here, let's choose to write back to Google like, hi, Google, this is a test from Simon. And so normally when I pressed send, Google would take us back to the inbox. Now if we press send and we archive the message, it takes us to the next email in the chain, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. Okay, we're getting down to the pointy end of this session now. Three more tips to go. Tip number six is send an archive. And so one of the most frustrating things with, um, with Google or with Gmail is that you know, whenever you send a message, test, you know, we send that, it takes us back to the inbox and the message is still there, this one just here. And now, you know, often once you've written a response to that message, it's done, you don't want it in the inbox anymore and then you have to go and manually you know, archive that message. Uh, so it's an extra step. So fortunately, there's a feature we can use um, which rolls sending and archiving into the one, one, the one uh, action. And so again, just here under the general settings tab, you scroll down to uh, send and archive. We want to activate this button. So once we've done that, save changes. Now we can see there if we want to respond to this email from Google in our inbox, Hi Google. And instead of just having a send button, we've now got to send an archive, which is awesome. So if we send this, we've got an empty inbox. So tip number seven. Uh, tip number seven uh, is called Boomerang. Now, what is Boomerang? Uh, it's not a specific feature within Google, but it's something you can add on to Gmail to make it more flexible. So let's have a look at that now. So. Boomerang for Gmail. So basically what Boomerang is, it's an awesome little plugin that enables you to do two things. Uh, the first thing is enable you to send an email but to specify a time in the future at which an email should be sent. And the second thing is the ability to basically snooze emails or to send them away from your inbox and to bring them back at a specific time in the future. Now this is really awesome 
because it enables you to basically manage your inbox much more effectively. You don't have hundreds of emails waiting for you to get to them. Um, you know, an email which relates to a meeting you might be having uh, on a future day, say Friday afternoon, you can send that email away and Boomerang will bring that back at the time of the meeting. So at the time it's going to be most relevant. So let's just have a look at this. Let's add it to our Gmail. I want to add this extension again. So this is something which will only work in Chrome. Okay, so let's try composing a message now and we'll see how the layout's different. Now, it looks much the same as it did before. Let's draft an email to me. Test email. Now, like I said, it looks much as it did before, except we've now got this option down here to send later. Um, so basically, let's go, hi, test from Simon, cool. So the two things here, one is send later, so when we click this, it's gonna ask us for a, sort of a future point at which we wanna send it. Um, alternatively, we can tick this box here and tell Boomerang, first it's gonna ask for permission, basically it wants to be able to manage our emails in our inbox, so we're gonna say that, allow that, close this window, no worries. Okay, so if we're sending an email to someone saying, hi, we just wanted to check in with you, um, but we also want to make sure we get a reply, we can tell Boomerang to bring this email back to our inbox to remind us that this person happened, has not replied if they've not responded. So that's a really awesome feature. So let's just send this now. Uh, let's say we can send it in an hour's time or two days time. Let's go with one hour. And there we go. Another feature of Boomerang is the ability to snooze emails like I mentioned before. So let's just give ourselves an email uh, that we can actually snooze that on. Hi from us. Okay, so that email is now in our inbox. Um, so let's open the email. We might be thinking, look, you know, uh, great, uh, I need to write back to Simon, um, but I haven't got time now. I'd love to be reminded to do that at some future date, maybe after work or whatever it might be. Simply come up here to the boomerang button. Uh, you can snooze the email. Um, or sort of re, you know, send the conversation away and have it brought back to your inbox at any time. You can sort of conf you know, configure your own custom time down here if that's what you want to do. Let's just say, bring it back tomorrow morning when I know I've got some time set aside to respond to email. And the email goes away. And again, it's sort of, um, if you uh, want to find it again, the email's still in your inbox, it hasn't disappeared. Um, these are the emails that are waiting to be sent. So that's the one that we, this email here is the one that we sent before. Um, so yeah, don't worry, nothing's disappearing from your inbox. Okay, that brings us up to our tip number eight. Uh, the last tip, I've saved the best for last, or the tip that I think is the best for last, and that is undo send. And so this always happens to me. I've sort of drafted an email, I send it off, and then I realize just after I've pressed send that I can, I've spotted the misspelling or I've forgotten to attach a file or something like that. Or there might be another sort of point that I wanted to include. Um, the great thing is that there's a feature baked into Gmail that enables you to do just that. So again, here in the settings, in our general tab, and then scroll down to undo send, just here. So just tick undo send, you can send the, set the kind of the, the, the amount of time that you want. I think 10 seconds is sufficient, but you can choose whatever you want. Um, again, scroll down to save changes. Now I'll show you how this works. So basically you draft an email as you would before. Hello again, I'm really spamming myself this afternoon, aren't I? Um, so, hi. Hi, Simon. Blah. So, we just go send. And it's like, oh my god, I forgot to actually write any text in that message. I simply just go here, undo. And it brings the message back for editing. So, I can sort of, uh, blah, bye, Simon. And so you can do this as many times as you need to. Sort of basically every time after you've sent the message, it gives you a period of time, 10 seconds in hour instance, with which to kind of pull back a message. Okay, well that's the end of our uh, Gmail Ninja School session. Uh, if you've got any questions, then feel free to reach out to me. Otherwise, I hope you found it useful. Bye-bye.